Welcome to Within the Madness. This is the women's edition. Uh, we go through the games tonight on this side of the brackets. Uh, following this, we'll do Within the Madness, the men's version, because, you know, the men's are on there. They're, I think, what are they, a round or two ahead? The men's are moving on to uh, 16. The women's moved on to the round of 32 between yesterday and today. So we're going to get started in, uh, well, last night <coughs> in the Mercado region, the 8-9 matchup. AC South Florida, they beat Washington State 57-53. Um, Tosinki had 18 points and five rebounds in the Alamo region. Stanford ran past Utah Valley. We all knew where that was going to go, 87-44. Keanu Williams led the Cardinals with 20 points. Um, as far as tonight goes, we had a couple games that are, like, literally in the process of ending. Um, Bradley in Texas, it's 81-62 with 25 seconds left. Texas advancing, shocker. Uh, Louisville. Um, that game's final. They beat Marist 74 to 43. Marist outscored Louisville in one quarter. From every quarter there on after, they scored less than 15 points. The next two quarters was nine. Um, and they finished the night with the grand total of 10 in the fourth quarter. Uh, Louisville turned up like a two seed you expect a two seed to do. Um, Haley Van Lith, <laughs> 17 points. Uh Tex again, the Texas Bradley final. It's official. 81-62. Charlie Collier, surprise, surprise, 23 points, 15 rebounds. Um, you know, WNBA <laughs> lottery pick has a big game. Cool. Potential top three pick has a big game. As Ray would say, there's not too much to add here, so we're going to move on. Um, we have some, uh, some upsets today. But as far as the Riverwalk region goes, they were off today. The women's isn't like the men's in, in terms of, you know, these two regions play today than the next two regions. They just try to get these games out the way. Um, Riverwalk had more games played yesterday than I think the other regions. Today, Alamo and uh, the other regions kind of caught up. Yeah, third seed of Georgia. They closed the game strong to beat 14 seed um, Drexel 67-53. Former Maryland Terp Jenna Stady with 19 points, seven rebounds. All right, here we goes with uh, the madness started on the women's side today. The first day. Everything went as planned, no issues, no madness today, anarchy. 13 seeded Wright State with the win over four seeded Arkansas, 66 62. Angel Baker led Wright State with 26 and 12. Uh, Chelsea Dungy and 27 in the loss for Arkansas. <laughs> I'm, spe no, I'm, I'm speechless because. You don't really expect uh, mid majors on the women's side. A lot right, of people, yeah. You gotta understand, people that don't know basketball gotta understand it's a difference between the men's and women's side. The, it, it, the talent pool on the men's side is deeper. It's not a disrespect to the women's. It just is like the women is top heavy. So in the Power Five conferences, they dominate because they get the top players out of high schools for a reason and internationally. You know what I'm saying? So they always have a talent advantage when they go against mid majors. Arkansas got bullied. That's an SEC. That's an SEC team getting bullied by a mid major. Um, you don't normally see that. That's why I'm just dumbfounded. I'm like, and when I mean by bully, I mean bully. Like they lost the battle on the boards, 44 to 30. You, like you, you understand what I'm saying? Like Arkansas was, is bigger, had better, better athletes. You don't normally see them get nobody in the Power Five conference when they face mid majors. Unless they just luck up and just have uh, all time great, like when you know when I when I was covering GW a few years ago, they had John Quill. You know what right. I mean? Right. Somebody like that, or Delaware when they had Deladon. Those are those are rare situations or whatnot. Typically, when they face mid majors, mid majors don't have no answers for the, the monsters that they have, not just inside, but even on the perimeter with the athleticism, the skill that they have. That's the first thing that jumped out at me when they when they lost the battle on the boards, forty four to thirty. Um, and, and and that just faded their possessions, and they capitalized on it. They scored, you know. So they the game was close. Don't get me wrong; it wasn't like it was a blowout. But those little things, similar to what we say on our resident professional team, is what causes you to lose in a do or die situation. And I think that was the difference. They out rebound on them, which means they got more second chance points. I mean, they got 15 offensive rebounds. Those are extra points, or you get a foul and get to the free throw line. So. It is like honestly, if they could, if Arkansas controlled the boards, they win the game. Because being honest, right, State couldn't guard them. They was fouling them. They put them on the free throw line. 
But in the half court, when they wasn't fouling, they locked Arkansas up. And when Arkansas missed, they got the board. They went down to school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was that was, <laughs> that 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 shocked the hell out of me, man. And it was on a neutral court. You know what I'm saying? It's just, hey, man, kudos to Rice State, man. They they came to play. So you gotta look at them like they're dangerous because now they're confident. They're like, we got Arkansas about it here. Why should we be scared of any? Of power five high major program, any team we face moving forward, we got a chance if we just do what we continue to do. Yeah, I think that their aggression from jump, I think it put Arkansas on the hills, man. I, I don't know if they was <laughs> prepared to get punched like that. And um, yeah, they they was rattled for a second till till they settled in. But um, but yeah, man, Angel Baker, my goodness, twenty six points, twelve rebounds. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's crazy. Played every man. minute, dog. Played all yeah. forty. It's like you won't feel me the entire game. <laughs> hey, I, I, man, the right state coach went to the hood. She get love. We, we gonna get them dogs. Huh? We gonna get some dogs. I ain't scared of nothing. We gonna come out here. We gonna do what we gotta do. But yeah, that that was tough. And then um, you know, right state showed some composure because you know Arkansas tried to storm back in the fourth, but you know they held on, closed that game out. That's big time, man. So yeah, kudos to them. And like Cardell said, they definitely they definitely should be considered dangerous moving forward. Armed and dangerous. <laughs> and that's kind of the theme we saw today. Um, even like Cardell said, you know, some of the lower seated teams from the mid majors putting up big, big boy fights because they had bigs and their bigs went went nuts. Like, like when I was going through looking at these stats, man, monstrous double doubles for everybody. If you had a good big, they went, you know, they went nuts. Hey. It, it, look, man, it's, it seems, it seems, it's look, it you is. know what it does, with, <laughs> you know what it does for you when you got quality bigs, especially if you're a guard, you can focus on doing guard things. I ain't got to worry about doing my guard things, going down here, boxing out these monsters, getting the board. Like, I can just do what I do. You see what I'm saying? Life is so much simpler, man. So, yeah, but yeah, you're right, man. It, it was. And that's not the only upset. I know we're gonna get to the other oh, one. Man. No. Oh, oh, wait, there's more. There's, <laughs> there's... <laughs> they went from all chalk on day one, where like everybody, everybody got all those games right on day one. Day two is like, so guess you guys haven't seen us play this year. <laughs> Burn your bracket. <laughs> game by game. Um, seven to ten matchup. Again, we're still in the Alamo region. Uh, Northwestern did their part to advance past 10 C UCF. Lindsey Paul oh, yeah. got 25 points. Three rebounds, three assists. Not a shocker there. Northwestern is annoying to play in the Big Ten. You know, some of the teams that beat them in the Big Ten, they're built to beat Northwestern. Everybody doesn't have this stuff that bothers, you know what I'm saying? That gives the Northwestern issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you don't have those things, Northwestern's annoying to play against. They just lock you down. They play at their pace. Seems like they, physical. Got, they physical as hell. They got four guards that love pull up jumpers and can hit them comfortably. It's they just grind you until the game's over. And if you're not used to it, their guards are bullies. <laughs> North my bad. Guards are bullies. My bad. Yeah. Just have goddamn turfs. And let me turn this off, man. <laughs> <Let's show them. laughs> well, we're going to talk about the positive turfs in a little bit. We're going to get that in a little bit. Um, Missouri State did their job. It was a fifth seed taking on a 12th seed. They used a strong third quarter to create separation um, to get past UC Davis 70 to 51. Jasmine Franklin. Again, monstrous double doubles is the key here. Seventeen and seventeen. People don't even know how, how to have regular double doubles uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing, nothing for the light. Um, in the Mercado region, uh, it's one of those upsets, right? You guys mentioned it. BYU eleven seed with one of several upsets on the day. Paisley Harding had twenty eight points, lead her team past six seed as Rutgers. Arella Garanta is she had a thirty piece, but it was in the L. BYU won the fourth 26 to 16. I'm gonna go get this clip. Y'all have at it. Uh, turnovers. Mm -hmm. Turnovers kill Rutgers bad and free throw shooting. They shot cool. They shot 73%, but both teams got the same amount of free throw attempts. BYU shot 20 to 23. Rutgers shot 17 to 23. They lost, the Rutgers lost by three. It literally came down to who's more efficient at the line. And that's what you get in these, when you get two quality teams on any level. It's the little things that separate you, man. Mm -hmm. 
And right tonight, BYU, they did the little things better than Rutgers. I mean, I feel for my – I'm a big Vivian Stringer fan. I'm a big fan. I love her, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? One of the greatest coaches of all time, man or woman, any level. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, they got to help her out. Her her players – I mean, Corinta is, like we said, she going to be in the WNBA. Cat has seven turnovers, though, and, and four fouls. So you force – you know, she played 40 minutes, but you had, you know, four fouls. So you just put another team on the line and they knocked it down. Uh, it, you can't make those mistakes and they know better, you know, especially when she, she definitely knows better. But Paisley Harsley, her counterpart, she had 28. So she went she went to work her way as well. Eight for 10 from the line. Gonzalez, 10 for 11 from the line. Gustin, two for two. Only three players got free throws from BYU and they knocked them up to down. They ain't played any games. So, and they didn't turn the ball over as much individually as a team, yeah. But individually, no, you know what I'm saying? So they didn't, well, Harding did, yeah. She had nine. So her and Guarantes, obviously, were going back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But she was just more efficient, you know. And that's why we harp on defense, man. Like, it, if it's a shootout or both of y'all off, who, it's like, who, who's going to get that stop? You know what I mean? And clearly, BYU got that stop, went to the free throw line, and – and they convert it, man. It sucks. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, on paper, Rutgers look better. But in these type of things, we all know in the tournament, that don't mean nothing, man. <laughs> it just don't. So little things is the reason why, you know, Rutgers lost this one. Yeah, man. Then when you – um like, neither team could take care of the ball. But BYU, they took advantage more than Rutgers did. They had 22 points off, 20 turnovers. Rutgers had 13 points off, 19 BYU turnovers. So that was some separation right there. Then man, that that foul on that on that three point shot, like thirty seconds left. That oh yeah, that's that's one to think about, man. That was once once that happened, I was like, yeah, it's a wrap. But um, but yeah, man, BYU toughed it out, and like Adil said, they the little things, man. If when the matchup is even like this, the that small stuff gonna tip the scales, and BYU yeah, took care of business. All that tween tween step back up you see on these little workout videos and stuff that don't mean nothing in these games. <laughs> <laughs> it don't mean it don't mean a damn thing. It, 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 if you don't know how to do the little things, you don't know how to think, you don't know how to execute, you don't know how to think when you're tired as hell, everything hurt, you exhausted. That's what it is. It comes down to mental mental toughness. And um, BYU had a little bit more. And uh, we're still not done with people that uh got uh, pushed yeah. and or upset. We're gonna. Keep moving along, though. Uh, four seed Indiana, they handled 13 seed VCU, 63-32. McKenzie Holmes led the way with 14-7. and seven. Uh, Three seed Arizona, they weren't about to get upset. The Arizona's not going out like that. Uh, they rolled past Stony Brook, 79-44. Trinity Baptiste with 18-6. and six. Ah, here we go. One more of those upset things. Let's go ahead and get this one for you guys. It's tough out here, man. It's uh, and may I say before we get to this, um, this is what I why a lot of folks are screaming about like this freshman class and how some outlets have done a horrible job giving the entire class love. We're seeing some of these freshmen that everyone to get a chance to see all year show out in this tournament. Um, they showed out in their conference tournament. Uh, one of them, <laughs> one of them went nuts in their conference tournament, and she showed out today too. Uh, Cardell, you're gonna love this stat when I get to it. Um, but five twelve matchup. Uh, Gonzaga's going home. They were the five. Belmont knocks off Gonzaga, 64-59. Freshman guard Destiny Wells, 25.7 assists, zero turnovers. Man, she got to be guarded. They can't guard. What else? <laughs> they can't guard. I mean, it can't it. Sometimes it's just self-explanatory. Nobody on Gonzaga can guard her. Um, and, and you saying they're not getting enough love. I mean, you know, certain people got to give more love to other freshmen than who they focusing on. I'm not going to, you know. I'm going to say, gonna, you know, this, the, uh, <laughs> the outlet that's in the same state as Connecticut, um, as UConn, I should say, there's other people in this country. It, I, was, I was appalled. Shocked and disturbed and offended, seeing the same Paige Becker's highlight package the first day in women's tournament. And again, I'm a UConn fan. 
This is ridiculous. For every game, they did not play till 8 p.m. And again, Destiny, this has been a wonderful freshman class. Like, whether if you have her at the top, that's cool. Have that discussion. But if you're going to bring her up, bring up everybody else, too. If you got time to talk about everything she did this year, go, go talk about Caitlin Clark. Go talk about Van Lith. Go talk mm -hmm. about Destiny Wells. Like, that's all I'm saying is if you have – not. A, and the sad part is y'all got the resources. Like, we, we already know covering women's basketball, everybody does it do their due diligence. We already see how the NCAA is going with some of the stuff coming out online, not even just with the weights and stuff like that, which uh, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw what's going on with like the, the media coverage side of it, where what's being allowed, like what's being afforded, like not enough photographers. Uh, we're at women's games, things like that. So when you log in to go get pull pictures, some people had to use pictures from last year's tournament for this year's for the first round gamers. Like it's, it's stuff like that. And again, you who we're talking about right now, you have more than enough resources. Like, there's no reason for that package to be replaying like that all day when they play at eight. It should only been played at eight. And that's why I always emphasize, let me get on the baseline, get my own pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's not enough cameras and stuff like that. I know I'm going to get a shot that I can use in one. And two, uh, I don't feel like paying somebody for something I can do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing. I can get down there and get busy. So... It is what it is, you know, but like you said, um, put more people on TV, you know, it's just as simple as that. And uh, we can all see them because like us, we we focus in the DMV. We, we, we believe we have enough to cover here. It's a lot. And we ain't even doing it. Everybody we, we can, you know what I'm saying? Especially with COVID going on. So um, it's always a resource. So it is what it is. Um, Belmont. Belmont pressure outside of Wells doing what she did. Belmont's ball pressure just it took us out of guards out that game. It disrupted the ball game. Uh, like you said, that Wells ain't feel nobody. She ain't even have a turnover as a freshman. It was, she she's cold as ice. Um, if she keep this up. We might have to put in the John Wick crew. Uh, that's the exclusive <laughs> group. You can't get in there unless you, you cold blooded. But she keep it up. She gonna get in there. But as a team, they had six turnovers. Gonzaga had twenty. That's game. That's game. It ain't nothing else to talk about. Mike, when you start turning over 20 times, like, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I ever played in a game when we did that, man. That's all my life. I just, that's a fear. That's a, mm -hmm. you know, if you do that, it might be some games you don't play coming up, and damn sure practice is going to be hell. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even want that one of those problems. So I'm definitely going to take care of the ball. Uh, you know, Townsend from Gonzaga, six. Uh, Truon uh, for Gonzaga three. Their guards, uh, Truon. Uh, I mean, their guards. Their guards. I mean, dang, it was thirteen turnovers. Like thirteen out of twenty turnovers. Like you, you beat yourself. Because obviously Belmont. I mean, the ball pressure did it because they couldn't handle Gonzaga size inside. That's why the game was close. So if you just took care of the ball, got the ball inside, as you saw in the clip, pick and rolls there all game. They were scoring off that easy. Y'all win this game running away, but y'all can't even get past half court comfortably. <laughs> so, and then you got Wells cooking you on the other end. It is what it is, man. That's it's very simple. They couldn't stop Wells, and Bell, my guards, could stop them. Yeah, man. And Wells, she so like the first quarter, I think it was 19 13 Gonzaga. Wells had 11 of the 13 for uh for Belmont. So she like she stopped it from getting ugly early. And then in the second quarter, um Belmont came out with eleven oh run and Gonzaga was just on the heels from that point on. Like then with um it's like with the added pressure, you know, and it oh, causing geez. turnovers. It's it's a wrap, man. Like oh, Jesus. Then once once that once that thing get rolling downhill, <laughs> Belmont confidence start getting inflated. You know, they get comfortable. And next thing you know, <laughs> here we are talking about an upset. Like like y'all said, that that young woman was comfortable out there, game on the line, throwing pocket passes with no worry of anything happening negatively. Because again, nobody could stay in front of her. Oh, half court getting ripped like that, dog. <laughs> nah, <son>. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what uh, what's probably high on someone's wish list next year. Recruiting wise, and if it's not, uh, man, that's tough. Um, Texas and a, uh, Texas A and M. Uh, there was a two C two fifteen matchup. They got pushed by Troy. Shout out to Troy. 
Um, um, it was 84-80. Sierra Johnson with 16-14 and 14 to lead Texas at A&M. Um, Alexis Guy had 26 points and 11 rebounds and a loss uh, for Troy. But, you know, <laughs> Troy pushed him. I just want to hear what y'all got to say about that one. Uh, turnovers. They had 18. That's a lot. Um, you know, especially as the lower seed, you can't you can't give that team that many more possessions. Um, you know, uh, Alexis Sy and uh, Felmus Loranga, they we we seen in this tournament on both sides where a dynamic duo uh, will get you about of here, and they, and they almost did. They had 46 points, 20 rebounds between them. So I mean that's that's tough, but um they were four for twenty three from three, that hurt them, um and you know just the better team won down the stretch man. That's shout, yeah, shout out to Destiny Pitts for hitting those big clutch free throws late in the game, um, yeah. especially off the bench. Uh, she scored four over seven points and with those free throws down the stretch. They needed every one. <laughs> they needed <laughs> they needed literally needed every one. Otherwise it, it might have got real. Crazy and over time, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, they they weren't afraid. They did all the Troy grinded it out. They all rebounded them. Uh, they got up into them defensively. Uh, took away Texas a and size advantage. Uh, made them fairly inefficient from the field. Even the, and the only difference was uh, the free throw attempts. And uh, Texas a and made a couple more threes. They just made a couple more shots. That's literally what it came down to. Otherwise, Troy would have got that W. So, um, shout out to them. Like I said, man, it, it's 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 getting there. That the death and the women's game is starting to get crazy and crazier. So you gotta come come ready to play, man. And, and that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the tournament. It's a team you might not even have thought about watching or think about. So you had to play them, and they well prepared to handle you. Their their system and their scheme. They are well prepared to handle you. So, you know. Got to keep an eye on Troy moving forward, but yeah, that was a hell of a performance, man. Because you, because when I looked at the bracket, I'm like, all right, Texas A and M, who else they gonna have? That way, it was just right. like that. Right. Right. Troy said, I, I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not so fast. Right? <laughs> Listen, so fast. They gotta, get, they gotta get past round one first, and they did. They survived. They went. That's what it's about. But uh, definitely with that point that you brought up, that the women's game is getting there in terms of the depth, because. It's going to be crazy. A lot of these teams, a lot of the top teams, we've been seeing happen little by little over the past couple of years. All these recruits ain't for sitting on somebody's bench <laughs> at the top school, uh, just being loaded all the time. Um, and and now before you get started, that's but, why I, I think it was Scholar Diggins last year. Mm -hmm. She was like, we don't have to start thinking about expansion too much because there's some nice players that don't get yeah. to play in the WNBA that are WNBA yeah. players. And I'm like, yeah, we can. No doubt, I, I'm with her. Uh, we can start by bringing back the Houston Comets. Uh, yep. We can start with that, <laughs> um, then, uh, and then we keep going. Yep. Nah, they they need at least two more teams. Um, and, and you know when we really saw that uh, during the bubble this past year, when people opting out, seeing mm -hmm. a whole lot of folks took steps, leaps, and opportunities, like seize those opportunities. Um, just like we know, I, I'm looking forward to it around the league this year. Like. Those training camp invitations, it's about to be wars out yeah. there this year coming up. Man. Hell yeah. Let me like, honest. Um, all you young women that in the tournament, and you know this ain't the NBA. That first round pick don't protect you from nothing. Uh, Especially here in D.C. It's a ball hole mission. Uh, best players, bro, come with me. Uh, that's not the only place out here where it's like that right now. All the movement <laughs> just happened to in the league. like Yeah. B, yeah, hey, look, I hope y'all on y'all P's and Q's. We've seen it has been a draft class, like not even three or four years removed. They not all here anymore. Killer be killed, dog. Yeah, they they definitely need to add a couple more teams, man, because 12 teams ain't a lot, dog. <laughs> not at all. Oh, man, but to wrap this up, uh, in the hemisphere region, um, last region of the night, uh, 7 10 matchup, Alabama held off the Tar Heels 80 to 71. A uh, huge game from Kristen Tide guard Jordan Lewis. She had 32 points, 11 rebounds, and eight assists. It's Alabama's point guard. Um, 215 matchup was Maryland and Mount St. Mary's. Went about as you expected. 98-45. Uh, the Terps started a little slow, you know, and that was literally like a five to six minute stretch. Yeah. Set it on defense, and look, man, it is it is what it was. Uh, the second quarter was 25-4. 
You guys pretty much got the picture from that. Ashley Wusu finished with 20 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Leader, um, lead boy, her. Boy. I wish I had the quote so I could share it verbatim, but it was Mount St. Mary's <laughs> coach talking about, you know, playing Maryland. She's like, man, they got six or seven pros over there. Like, we knew what it was coming in. Yeah, she's seen her grow up throughout high school. Being there. She know what she know what Ashley is. She know what Reese is. Yeah, she know what Mimi is. Yeah, they've been killing for a long time. <laughs> so it's not a hyperbole from Mount Saint Mary's. It's the truth. Like Cardo said, she is perfectly aware of what's over there. And again, and and a not because she won't. No, I saw didn't. Sue Bird shout her out. Uh, she shout out Maryland a couple days ago. Whatever. Her and Rapino. Yeah. Her and Rapino. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Rapino her, shout out, uh, her and her wife. Megan Rapino oh. shouted out a Wusu. And, you know, Maryland immediately responded. It was after practice. So Wusu took a picture doing a Rapino pose. And, you know, so <laughs> Rapino's over there. <laughs> There's a love affair there from the. You know, marketing, uh, man. Got a market, man. Hey, man you gotta make them. You gotta make them. Get this soccer right? money. Get some hey, soccer money. Man. I mean, you know, those eyes seeing them tweets. If you're Maryland, like, you know, you do what you gotta do. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Maryland tomorrow night on the Focus TV. I'm not gonna waste too much time here tonight because we talk about everybody. But before we get off uh, here and move on to the men's side, I just want to give you guys a couple quick updates on the late games that I omitted. Um, Oregon's leading South Dakota after the first quarter, 25-8. Uh, UCLA. Is leading Wyoming 23 to 11. Uh, Oregon, the Oregon South Dakota games in the Alamo region, and the UCLA Wyoming game is in the hemisphere region. So, with that, we bid you guys good evening, and we'll be back in just a little bit for the men's side of Within the Madness for uh, today, March 22nd. <laughs>